create a SQL Server login, you use the same login dialog box as for Windows logins. So I'll go ahead and open that up. But instead, I'm going to make this selection here. And that enables a lot of the selections here. So I want one of our dogs to have access to SQL Server. So I'm going to create an account for him, Chert. For SQL Server login, I also have to supply a password. So I'll give this a reasonably secure password. Type it in twice. Hopefully I did it correctly. And then I also have the option to enforce different password policies. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But I'm also going to make AdventureWorks 2012 Chert's default database. And then I also probably want to give Chert some permissions. So I'll give him access to the AdventureWorks 2012 database. And I'll make his default schema the production. Check that name. I spelled it right. Good. OK. All right. So I'll click on OK. And now we have a login for Chert as well, right there. And if I need to change any permissions, change any aspects of the login, I can open up the Properties dialog box once again. You can also create logins using Transact SQL Code. And so here's a statement that will create a login topaz with a very strong password. I'll execute that. And now there's a login topaz. Still doesn't have any permissions within any databases. So I'm already in the InventureWorks 2012 database. So I'm going to create a user of the same name as the login and set the default schema to human resources. And similarly, I can drop the user. The login still exists, but I've dropped the user. And now I'll create a user Topaz D to change the name. And once again, set the default schema to human resources. SQL Server logins are not part of Windows. It's important to understand that. SQL Server logins are saved in and managed by SQL Server. A user who connects to SQL Server via a SQL Server login is prompted for a login name and password. If you select the Windows only mode of authentication, then all SQL Server logins will be disabled and users will be able to connect only by using their Windows logins. Mixed mode with SQL Server logins is much more flexible. For example, it supports users on Windows 9X computers but it's also less secure. SQL Server logins and passwords are saved in the system tables in SQL Server, which are file-based. Anybody who gains access to those files could conceivably hack administrative logins and passwords. It's unlikely. Microsoft does a pretty good job of protecting them, but it's conceivable that that could happen. If you configure your SQL Server instance to support SQL Server logins, then there's one built-in SQL Server login that you need to watch for the SA login. Now, as you explore the security settings within SQL Server, you may notice a login named SA. It hangs around with the other logins in the Logins node in Object Explorer. The SA, or System Administrator login, is included mainly for backward compatibility with older versions of SQL Server. The SA account is mapped to the sysadmin fixed server role. And anyone who uses SA is a full system administrator with irrevocable rights over the entire SQL Server instance and all the databases in it. As you can imagine, that's dangerous. The problem is, is that you can't modify or delete the SA login. If you select Mixed Mode Authentication when you install SQL Server, you're prompted for a password for the SA user. Unless you set a password, anyone can log in as SA with no password and play, let's administer the server. Needless to say, this is the last thing that you want your users doing. The good news is, is that the last couple versions of SQL Server have mandated that you set an SA password. Earlier versions of SQL Server didn't. So that opened up all kinds of security vulnerabilities. You want to use the SA login 
as a backdoor into the server. Only if system administrators are unavailable or have forgotten their Windows passwords. But to tell you the truth, if that happens, you probably need new admins. I have very few absolute recommendations in this course. There's just too many different ways to do things. But here's one of them. Never, ever use the SA login for access to a database in an application. If you do that, you could give a hacker administrative level control over your database server if the hacker is able to get control of the application. If the developer is messed up, left security vulnerabilities, that could open the door to hackers getting access to your entire SQL Server instance. In the past, this has been an easy way to attack servers and is a horrible, horrible practice. Instead, either set up a custom Windows or SQL Server login for the application to use and give that login the absolute minimum permissions necessary to run the application. And this is just another application of the principle of least privilege. In versions of SQL Server before 2005, there was no easy way for a system administrator to enforce password policies that could help make a system more secure. For example, SQL Server had no way to force users to create strong passwords of a minimum length and a mix of alphanumeric and other characters. If someone wanted to create a login with a single letter for a password, you couldn't configure SQL Server to prevent it. Likewise, there was no way to cause passwords to expire on a regular basis, such as every three months. Some people rightly saw this as a major reason not to use SQL Server logins. But now, SQL Server can hook into the password policies of Windows. And this applies to Windows Server 2003, Windows Vista, or later versions. The passwords are still stored in SQL Server, but SQL Server can now hook into the password policies of Windows. And this applies to Windows Server 2003, Vista, and later versions of Windows. The passwords are still stored in SQL Server, but SQL Server makes a call into the net validate password policy Windows API method, which was first introduced in Windows Server 2003. This API function applies the Windows password policy to SQL Server logins and returns a value that indicates whether the password is valid. SQL Server calls this function when a user creates, sets, or resets a password. You can define the Windows password policies via the local security settings applet in the Window Control Panel's administrative tools. So I can get that to here. It's a control panel, administrative tools, and local security policy. The applicable settings are here within account policies. So there's a password policy section and account lockout policy. A few of the more important password policies include enforce password history. So what this does is it prevents users from reusing old passwords, such as alternating between two passwords. And what you do is you specify the number of passwords that are remembered. Typically, this number is from 3 to 10, would be typical settings. If you set it to 10, it means that the user has to create 10 unique passwords before they can reuse the first password. Minimum password length is important because longer generally means more complexity. And then you can also set whether or not the password has to meet complexity requirements. And then there's a couple policies for setting the minimum password age and the maximum password age. The maximum is the number of days before a user is prompted to change their password. And the minimum password age is the number of days before a user is allowed to change a password. So they can't change it too often. And then there's a few additional policies within account lockout policy. The account lockout duration is the time in minutes that the account is locked out if the lockout threshold is enabled. And the account lockout threshold is the maximum number of unsuccessful login attempts before the account is locked out. And then the last one is reset 
account lockout counter after. This is the time in minutes after which the counter of unsuccessful attempts is reset. This is enabled when the account threshold is enabled. Now, it may be very tempting to use these account lockout policies, but you do need to be careful. This could be a source of an attack, because if I know your username, and I know that you're an administrator on this, this Windows machine, I could attempt to log into the machine numerous times until I exceed the account lockout threshold. And then you're locked out from the server for a period of time unless an admi another administrator comes in and resets your account. So be careful with those settings. All right, so that's where you set the policies that SQL Server will hook into. Then in order to use them, I can right click on chart here, look at properties, and then specify whether or not this login should enforce password policy, or more specifically, whether SQL Server should enforce password policy for this login. So as long as you're running SQL Server on one of the versions of Windows that supports that API call, then SQL Server will collaborate with Windows in order to enforce the password. And then you can also opt to enforce password expiration. And this is currently disabled, but an option is also that the user must change the password at next login. Typically, you'll want to set that for new logins that you create. Because then the user logs in, they have to change it, and you don't know what the password is. So it makes it more secure. Strictly speaking, this last option isn't one of the password policy settings that hook into Windows. But it is part of the overall set of policies that you can define for a login. All right, password policies apply when you create logins using Transact SQL as well. For example, if you're running SQL Server on Windows 2003 and later and have password policies enabled, then this statement will fail. So let me use master and execute this code. And I'm running this on Windows 7, and so this is allowable. But again, if I was running this on Windows Server, then I wouldn't be able to create a login with such a simple password. In this case, the problem is that the password is the same as the username, and that's one of the no-nos. You can control the policies when you create or alter logins. So I have this code here which alters the Topaz login. But in this case, the code turns off the options to check expiration and policy. So you don't want to do this too often. Password policies are a good thing. But in this case, the check expiration option controls whether SQL Server checks the age of the password against policy. And check policy applies to the other policies. A must change option is also available that forces the user to change the password at their next login. And then if a user makes too many unsuccessful attempts to log in, exceeding the number set in the account logout policy, an administrator can reset the account using the unlock option. So use code like that. 